Today on Reese Dixon, I am making my bed. By which I mean, I am making my bed. and today I am ready to show you how to build the headboard that goes with the upholstered bed frame we just made. So I'm going to be making an upholstered wingback style headboard which means it's kind of like a, a wingback armchair where it's got the sides that come out and the whole thing's upholstered and so it's taken me a little while to really break down um, how this is going to be constructed. So let me walk you through all the different pieces. I have laid out here all the things, the, what are going to be the frames that make up our headboard. Here in the center, this is the frame for the main centerpiece. And then on both sides, we have the wings, what will be the arms that come out. And so let me show you a little bit closer and give you the measurements um, because if you break it down step by step, this is actually a really simple project. You just, it gets easy to be overwhelmed with all the different pieces, but it's really not complicated. We'll just take it one step at a time. Once you've got all your pieces cut and laid out, that's actually the hardest part. Now, just like we did when we built the bed frame, we're going to assemble this frame by drilling pilot holes. And so I've got my drill bit all set up with a drill the same width as the wood screws that I'm going to use. These are two and a half inch long wood screws and they're just the right size to go all the way through one of these two by fours and into the next piece. In case I didn't mention it before, all of the lumber I'm using for this frame, it's just two by fours. You can find these in any, any home improvement store. And if you can't find them labeled as two by fours, then look for them as labeled as studs um, because they're the same thing. So this is great to work with because it's really cheap lumber. And since it's all going to be on the inside of an upholstered piece, it's great to save a little cash where you can. So I'm going to um, follow this little template I've made out for myself here and drill pilot holes to make it really strong. I'm going to do two holes at each intersection here and then follow it up with a wood screw. Now I want to um, pay special attention to this middle part. This is all going to get covered in a giant piece of plywood, but because I'm making this headboard so big, one piece of plywood alone wasn't going to cut it. I'm going to have to have a seam in my plywood. So even if I didn't need it for strength, which I do, I would have to have a center piece to screw all the plywood into where that seam is. So that's why I have it going vertical instead of say across is so that I can have that seam. So with these cross pieces to support it, I'm offsetting them here so that I can come in from both sides and screw them into the metal piece. So you just kind of have to stagger them a little bit so that you can get through all the studs. Okay, so I have a ton of drilling to do and, uh, and then once this is all assembled, then we'll move on to the plywood. With our boxes built, our frames built, now we can come back in with the piece of plywood. I had these cut for me at the home improvement store since it's just way easier to deal with it there because the plywood comes in these enormous sheets so it's far more manageable for them to do it with their equipment than for me to try to do it at home. So I have my two pieces here that are butted up against each other right down the middle. So now all I have to do is the pilot holes and the screws just like we've been doing every other step of the way. For this middle seam, I'm going to want to kind of alternate to make sure that that seam stays nice and strong and attached to that middle support beam. 
So I'll just kind of put a screw on one side and then a few inches up all the way up the top. Uh, the only other thing to keep in mind as you're doing this is that you avoid the screws you've already put in place. You don't want your screws to be hitting each other. So pay attention to that, especially at the corners. You probably won't want to put a screw right in that corner because it'll hit the screws already existing in the frame. So you just want to put one off to each side of it so that you're not running those into each other. So screws all the way around and then that's basically it for the building of this and uh, and then we can move on to what we'll need to do for a bolstery. So I think you can see now the bed is really starting to take shape and all these are are, are frames with the plywood on top just like these big boxes that we've built but now that they're positioned you can see I think how it's all going to look at the end. So we're almost ready for our upholstery. But just like we did when we built the frame, we have to leave ourselves room for where we're going to attach the pieces. The screws can't get through all the batting and fabric without turning into a big, ripped, tangled disaster. So we just want to leave ourselves those little notches where the screw can get through. So we're going to drill our pilot holes before we do any of the upholstery. We'll need to attach the wings to the main headboard by drilling just through the plywood and into this side piece. And then we'll need to do it at the bottom where the bed frame hits the headboard as well, back down under here in this two by four. So we'll drill a bunch of pilot holes and then we'll start to upholster before we attach anything. So these three boxes will still be separate. We're just making holes, no screwing yet, and then we'll start to assemble. So I'm going to do that, and then I'm gonna skip ahead to the batting stage, because that is pretty self-explanatory. We're just going to take the batting and staple it around to the back. So let me show you here. Ugh. I'll wrap the batting all around the sides and all my staples will be back here on this side of the frame. Um, you can even go inside if you want to, but we're not going to cover any batting on this naked part. That's going to be uh, remain exposed to, so that we can do all of our work. So it's just batting wrapped around the front, leaving room for those pilot holes. And, um, and then we'll start to, re to upholster with the fabric and I've got a couple interesting little tricks for that. So, Pilot holes and the batting, and uh, and then we'll go from there. Bear and I went ahead and upholstered the big centerpiece to save us some time on this video, because it's just like when we did the batting. It's we just pulled it as tight as we could around the back and stapled it onto the back. Again, not being afraid to use as many staples as necessary. The only thing that you need to know about doing something this size is that you will probably never find the fabric that you want to use that full width that you need. So instead of having one giant seam that ran right down the middle and was a total eyesore, what I did was I cut two pieces of fabric the height that I needed, and then with one of those, I cut it in half. So the seams are actually right here and right here on the sides, but that's the nice thing about this fabric that I chose, you probably can't see it. The seam kind of blends in with the pinstriping. So this piece is done. I went ahead and just like when we were doing the bed frame, anytime I'm gonna have to have screws attaching these pieces, I need to make room for them to get through all the fabric. So down here at the bottom, I've cut out through the batting and the fabric where we drilled those pilot holes. And I've got spaces for that on the side as well. So this centerpiece is ready to assemble. Now, let me show you how to do the wing back because that I had to, uh, uh, woo, I had to get a little creative with. Okay, so first of all, this is, here's where your frame is. Here's your batting stapled to the frame. And then this is muslin. And I just use muslin because it's like the cheapest fabric you can buy. And I stapled that, there's no, fold it over edge or anything, it's completely raw because this is going to be on the inside. And so I've done this, I've stapled three sides of it, more like a two and a half sides so that I can still get into here. And I've done this because I'm not doing a full plywood back 
you know, I'm not doing anything to cover this frame up because then it would just be really heavy and impossible to assemble because you have to get in here somehow to do the screws. So this is just an extra layer of fabric that gives it a little more, bit more stability so that you don't just have your designer fabric as you're carrying it around and trying to, you know, punch through. It's just another layer of stability. So I've got this attached on three sides here. And the open side corresponds with where I have these pilot holes because that's the side I need to get into in order to attach it to the bed. So to upholster this, I actually did a little sewing. This is not the only way to do this. You can, you know, carefully wrap it around, but I think it's the easiest way. Um, all you have to do is sew a little box with a gusset. See, so here's the front, here's the back, and then here's the gusset, which is just the middle part that goes all the way around. And so I sew basically this big box on three sides. If you've never done anything like this before, I'm going to link to my uh, how to sew a bench cushion tutorial I did, and it's the same basic thing. It's just you don't have to even worry about zippers, and you're gonna leave one of the long sides open. So this just becomes like a giant pillowcase, and I'm going to put this right on top here. <laughs> you want to wait for help? Yes, help! <laughs> <laughs> okay, so maybe that's a two-person job. <laughs> but now that my giant pillowcase is on, I've got, uh, you can see that um, it's still a little bit soft here where there's no back, but that extra layer of muslin is going to help a lot. Once, especially once we pull this nice and tight. Whew. Okay, so now that I've been wrestling with it, I have to find my pilot holes again. They are on this side right here. So I'm not gonna staple anything yet. I'm just gonna pull it tight and cut through that layer of fabric to make the pilot holes. And then it will be time to assemble. So looking at it this way, I'll have it you know, perpendicular to the centerpiece of the bed. But then I can just pull back these layers to screw this side of the bed into the centerpiece of the bed. And then once those screws are in, I can pull all of this tight and hide it behind the back. Okay, so let me assemble and I'll show you uh, what we're gonna do with the messy back now. We are all attached. This thing is super strong now. So now we just have to clean up this mess. And really, if you want to, you could just staple down the raw edges and leave it. If you're gonna have it shoved up against a wall like I am, then, you know, it only has to be as pretty as you can live with. Um, sometimes I've seen people use big beds like this to divide a room um, in like an open floor area. And if you want that, you definitely want your back to be pretty. So what we're gonna do is first of all, come back in here and staple in this piece of muslin that we left open. And then we'll take all of this and staple it to the back side. We wanna make sure that when we do this, as we pull it tight, our gusset seams, these seams here, will be um, right on the edge and straight up and down of the front of our wing back because I'm gonna come back with nail heads. So that's gonna be really emphasized if you're gusset lines are all wavy, it'll be really obvious. So you just want to take a little care as you're pulling this in place to staple that you're not pulling too hard one direction or another. You want it just nice and straight. Okay, so I've got that to staple down. And then to cover all of this up, I cut another giant piece of this fabric. So here's how I'm gonna cover all this up. I have one piece of muslin cut to the size of the back and I had to seam it together. So that's sewn right down the middle. I didn't worry about where my seam was because this is gonna be on the inside. And then I have another piece of the same suiting fabric, the same size. So I'm going to layer these things together because by now we have so many staples in here. I, I don't wanna take a chance on you know running out of room or hitting them. 
So I'm going to take these two pieces of fabric together at the same time and start by securing my top. So what I do is I lay this like that. So just the very edge is on the back with the muslin on the top and I'm gonna come in and staple all the way across. So then when I pull this back over, all the top staples will be hidden underneath. Oh gosh, it's so big, you can't see it. Okay, see, it'll be hidden underneath a nice, neat little seam like that. So for this top layer at least, there will be no visible staples. For the rest of it, I'm gonna go ahead and just do a line of staples as neatly as I can. If you want no visible staples anywhere, then uh, you can go to your upholstery store and they actually have all kinds of fancy tools. Like there's these little teeth bars you wrap the fabric in and hammer in place, but you can get pretty involved if you really want to. But it's gonna be facing the wall, so I'm not gonna worry about it. One neat line here is gonna be enough for me if for some reason somebody's like standing on top of it. I, I don't know. But anyway, <laughs> that's gonna be neat enough. And I'm just gonna staple the rest. And, uh, and then it's just on to decorations. We're closing in on almost done with this big project. So this is the bed. We've got all of our upholstering done. We've moved the bed frame into position. And so now what I'm going to do is come through here with these uh, nail heads. I've already finished it on that side. And you can get nail heads, just the individual nails that you nail each one. And I've used those, those are fine. But for upholstery pieces, there's a shortcut that exists that I think is really great. And it's just this trim, this nail head trim. And every few, like every four spots, there's one open that you nail into it. So I'm just going to take this and line it up right against the edge and go all the way from the top to the floor. Here, I'm just gonna kind of bend around that corner like that. And see, this one has a hole in it, so I'll come back and nail through there and do that all the way down on both sides of that little gusset that I've made. And then I think that's it. I think I'm ready to start moving the bed back in here and assemble all of this. I'm going to uh, attach the bed frame to the headboard. I guess it really is optional. It functions perfectly well without it, but just for a little extra stability, I drilled those pilot holes down at the bottom, remember, and I drilled holes through the bed frame. So I'm just going to attach those through the pilot holes that I've drilled to just make sure that everything's nice and secure, finish up my nail heads, and then make this bed. Here is our finished project with the bed made as much as it's going to get yet. I still have to do some work, you know, to make the bedding match how grand this bed frame is. I've got visions of shams and pillows and throw blankets and all kinds of things. But for right now, it's still pretty great. <laughs> I am so excited about it. And what I'm really surprised about is how much more comfortable it is because I've gone for so many years with my bed straight on the ground that having just that little extra give of a proper bed frame is incredible. And then having the support of the headboard so I can actually prop my pillow up is <laughs> amazing. I don't know how I went so long without it, but I love how it looks. And I really love that since I chose that masculine suiting fabric, I can put whatever quilt on this bed that I want to. I don't have to worry about matching a color scheme. It's almost like the bed frame is duck decked out in this really classy suit, and whatever quilt I put on here it gets to be the flashy tie, <laughs> and it'll just work no matter what, which is great for a quilter like me. So I hope that this was inspiring for you, that you can see if you just break things down step by step, you can accomplish amazing things. The inspiration piece for this bed was $12,000 or maybe even $14,000. I can't remember. One of those two. I built this entire thing, headboard and bed frame with fabric for, what did we say? 500, just under $500, which is actually cheaper than if I had just bought something at Costco. So it's pretty amazing. I am thrilled and I feel like powerful and womanly because I built it with my bare hands. 
<laughs> so if I can do it, I know you can do it too. If you have any questions, leave them for me in the comments. And thanks for watching this all with me. Subscribe to the channel so you can see all the big stuff I've got in store for this bedroom. And we'll see you next time. Bye-bye.